you think suicide when you heard she died? I, I had no idea. I was at the beach in, in Malibu at our beach house, and I had a lot of my girlfriends there, and each one had 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 a, a problem bigger than the last one, and we were all really laughing about it because it was like, oh man, nothing could be that bad. But Marilyn Monroe's death on August 4th, 1962, remains one of Hollywood's greatest mysteries. Officially ruled as an overdose, questions surrounding the circumstances of her passing have persisted for decades. Frank Sinatra, a close friend and confidant of Monroe, became involved in uncovering the truth behind her death. Sinatra's investigations into Monroe's death led him to uncover startling revelations. Let's dive into Sinatra's investigations and the evidence he uncovered that sheds new light on this Hollywood mystery. Childhood and Early Life of Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe, originally named Norma Jean Mortensen, later baptized as Norma Jean Baker, was born on June 1, 1926, in Los Angeles, California. Her childhood was marked by instability and challenges. Norma Jean's mother, Gladys Pearl Baker, struggled with mental illness and was often unable to care for her daughter. Norma Jean's father's identity remains uncertain, and she was raised in foster homes for much of her early life. Norma Jean experienced a turbulent upbringing, moving between various foster families and sometimes facing neglect. She once remarked that she never knew where she belonged. This instability profoundly affected her formative years, shaping her sense of identity and contributing to feelings of insecurity. At the age of 16, Norma Jean married her first husband, James Dougherty, in 1942. Their marriage was part of Norma Jean's desire to escape the foster care system and gain a sense of stability. However, the marriage ended in divorce a few years later, as Norma Jean pursued a career in modeling and later acting. In 1945, Norma Jean was working in a munitions factory when she was discovered by a photographer, David Conover, who was taking pictures of women supporting the war effort. Her natural beauty and photogenic qualities caught his attention and he encouraged her to pursue a modeling career. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of Norma Jean's transformation into Marilyn Monroe. Norma Jean adopted the stage name Marilyn Monroe in 1946, combining the name of actress Marilyn Miller with her mother's maiden name, Monroe. The decision to become Marilyn Monroe was a strategic move to enhance her appeal in Hollywood and launch her career in show business. People's Favorite Star in 1946, Norma Jean signed a contract with 20th Century Fox and officially changed her name to Marilyn Monroe. She started with small roles in films like Scudda Who, Scudda Hay, and Dangerous Years. Over the next few years, Marilyn worked hard to establish herself in Hollywood. Marilyn Monroe's filmography spans a range of genres and showcases her versatile talent on screen. One of her earliest notable roles was in The Asphalt Jungle in 1950, a crime film directed by John Huston. In this movie, Marilyn played Angela Finlay, the young mistress of a criminal who gets caught up in a heist. Her performance was brief but memorable, marking the beginning of her rise to stardom. Following her breakthrough, Marilyn starred in All About Eve in 1950, directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz. In this acclaimed drama, she portrayed Miss Caswell, a young actress hoping to make it in Hollywood. Though a minor role, Marilyn's presence added charm to the ensemble cast. Marilyn's next significant role came in Niagara in 1953, a film noir thriller directed by Henry Hathaway. Here she played Rose Loomis, a femme fatale plotting against her husband at Niagara Falls. The movie highlighted Marilyn's seductive allure and acting skills, establishing her as a leading lady. One of Marilyn's most iconic performances came in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes in 1953, a musical comedy directed by Howard Hawks. Starring alongside Jane Russell, Marilyn stole the show as Lorelai Lee, a gold-digging showgirl with a heart of gold. Her rendition of Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend became an enduring cultural touchstone. In 1954, Marilyn starred in River of No Return, a western directed by Otto Preminger. Here she played Kay Weston, a saloon singer caught in a perilous journey down a river. The film showcased Marilyn's dramatic range and further solidified her star power. Continuing her success, Marilyn starred in 
There's No Business Like Show Business, in 1954, a musical directed by Walter Lang. In this ensemble film, she played Vicki Parker, a talented performer navigating the world of show business. Marilyn's presence added glamour and charm to the colorful musical numbers. In 1955, Marilyn starred in The Seven Year Itch, directed by Billy Wilder. This romantic comedy featured the iconic scene of Marilyn standing over a subway grate, her white dress billowing. Her portrayal of the girl captivated audiences and contributed to the film's lasting popularity. Marilyn's comedic talent shown in Some Like It Hot in 1959, another Billy Wilder masterpiece. Playing Sugarcane Kowalczyk, a singer on the run with two musicians disguised as women, Marilyn delivered a hilarious and endearing performance that earned her critical acclaim. In Let's Make Love in 1960, directed by George Cukor, Marilyn starred opposite Eve Montan. She played Amanda Dell, an actress caught up in romantic and comedic entanglements. Marilyn's charm and comedic timing added depth to her character. Marilyn's final completed film was The Misfits in 1961, directed by John Huston. Co-starring Clark Gable and Montgomery Clift, the drama explored themes of loneliness and disillusionment in the American West. Marilyn's portrayal of Rosalind Tabor, a sensitive woman seeking meaning, showcased her dramatic prowess. Personal Struggles and Substance Abuse As a young woman, Monroe entered the entertainment industry and rose to fame during World War II. She changed her name to Marilyn Monroe and became a sought-after actress known for her beauty and charm. However, behind the glamorous facade, Monroe grappled with profound loneliness and anxiety. The pressures of Hollywood took a toll on Monroe's mental health. She often felt isolated and misunderstood, despite her public image as a sex symbol and movie star. Monroe's personal relationships were tumultuous, characterized by multiple marriages and affairs. These romantic entanglements contributed to her emotional turmoil. To cope with her inner struggles, Monroe turned to substance abuse, particularly barbiturates and alcohol. She used these substances to alleviate stress and anxiety, which were exacerbated by the demands of her career and the intense public scrutiny she faced. Monroe's substance abuse issues became increasingly problematic over time. She developed a reputation as a party girl in Hollywood, where she was often seen at social gatherings and nightclubs. However, behind the scenes, Monroe's reliance on drugs and alcohol escalated. In addition to her personal challenges, Monroe struggled with self-esteem issues and a fear of aging in an industry that prized youth and beauty. Despite her success on screen, Monroe felt trapped by her public persona as the quintessential dumb blonde which did not reflect her true intelligence and aspirations. Throughout the 1950s and early 1960s, Monroe's substance abuse became more apparent to those around her. She often arrived late to film sets or missed work altogether due to her struggles with addiction. Monroe's behavior became increasingly erratic, leading to concerns among her colleagues and friends. In her final years, Monroe's substance abuse spiraled out of control she experienced frequent mood swings, depression, and emotional instability. Affairs with the Kennedys Marilyn Monroe's rumored affairs with President John F. Kennedy and his brother, Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, RFK, captured public attention during the early 1960s. These relationships were said to have significant personal and political implications. Monroe first met JFK in the 1950s, but their relationship likely began around the time of JFK's presidential campaign in 1960. They reportedly had a discreet rendezvous arranged by mutual friend Frank Sinatra, often meeting at his Palm Springs home for privacy. Monroe's most famous public moment with JFK was her sultry rendition of Happy Birthday, Mr. President in 1962, which fueled speculation about their closeness. According to Monroe's confidants, she valued private conversations with JFK, where he shared his views on world affairs. Monroe saw herself as intellectually connected to JFK, not just romantically involved. Their interactions continued within JFK's inner circle during 1961-1962. Robert F. Kennedy's involvement with Monroe is also subject to speculation. Some historians suggest RFK used his relationship with Monroe to gain favor with his brother, JFK. Others claim it was a romantic rivalry, with RFK pursuing Monroe partly to compete with JFK. 
Records show extensive late-night phone calls between RFK's office and Monroe's home, indicating intimacy beyond mere acquaintance. Monroe admired the Kennedys and saw them as guides to power in Washington. However, Monroe's relationships with the Kennedys took a turn when JFK began distancing himself and pursuing other mistresses like Judith Exner. This rejection deeply hurt Monroe, leading to emotional distress and a sense of abandonment. In the final months of her life, Monroe desperately tried to reconnect with JFK and RFK, seeking answers and closure. She made distraught phone calls to the Kennedy compound, but RFK's office instructed staff to block her calls, exacerbating her emotional turmoil. The relationships with the Kennedys were a central focus of Monroe's life during this period. She felt used and discarded by the very figures she admired and trusted. Many speculate that Monroe's knowledge of sensitive information regarding the Kennedys' affairs, combined with her emotional vulnerability, made her a potential liability for the Kennedy administration. Some believe her rumored intention to hold a press conference and reveal her rekindled relationship with Joe DiMaggio, her ex-husband, posed a threat to the Kennedys' public image and political careers. The mob connection and political intrigue Marilyn Monroe's alleged affair with President JFK and her subsequent involvement with RFK raised concerns among powerful individuals, including members of the Mafia. Monroe's close proximity to the President and his brother prompted speculation about potential influence on political decisions. It's believed that Monroe's intimate knowledge of the Kennedys' personal lives and affairs could have posed a threat to their reputations and political ambitions. This concern likely attracted the interest of figures associated with organized crime, who saw an opportunity to leverage Monroe's connections for their own gain. Sam Giancana, a prominent Chicago mob boss, was reportedly involved in monitoring Monroe's interactions with JFK. The Mafia's interest in Monroe extended beyond mere curiosity. They sought to capitalize on her relationships, to exert influence over political decisions, particularly regarding issues like control over casinos in Cuba. According to some theories, the Mafia wanted to capture compromising images or information involving Monroe and the Kennedys to blackmail President Kennedy into supporting their interests. Monroe's rumored involvement with high-profile political figures made her a pawn in a complex game of power and influence. Frank Sinatra, a close friend of Monroe, reportedly shared insights with her about the risks associated with her relationships with the Kennedys. Sinatra's knowledge of the inner workings of Hollywood and political circles allowed him to connect dots between Monroe's personal life and broader political agendas. The theory suggests that Monroe's death was not solely driven by personal struggles, but was influenced by external forces seeking to protect their interests. Sinatra's investigations into Monroe's demise reportedly uncovered ties between organized crime and individuals within political circles. However, it's important to note that these theories remain speculative, as concrete evidence linking Monroe's death to the Mafia or political figures has not been conclusively proven. The exact nature of Monroe's interactions with individuals like Sam Giancana and their motivations remain subject to debate and interpretation. Sinatra and Monroe's Friendship Frank Sinatra and Marilyn Monroe were both prominent figures in Hollywood during the 1950s and 1960s. Sinatra, known for his singing career and acting roles, and Monroe, famous for her roles in films like Some Like It Hot and The Seven Year Itch, bonded over their shared struggles and successes. Sinatra and Monroe often confided in each other about the pressures of celebrity life. They found solace in their friendship, which provided a sense of understanding and support amid the public scrutiny they faced. Despite rumors suggesting a romantic relationship, Sinatra maintained that their connection was purely platonic. He expressed deep concern for Monroe's well-being, recognizing her vulnerabilities and emotional struggles. Sinatra saw Monroe as a friend in need, rather than a romantic interest. The two stars spent time together at various locations, including Sinatra's Cal Neva Lodge at Lake Tahoe. Monroe visited Cal Neva Lodge to meet with her ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio, and seek refuge from the pressures of fame. Sinatra welcomed Monroe as his guest, providing her with a safe space away from the public eye. During their encounters, Sinatra and Monroe engaged in candid conversations. Sinatra listened attentively as Monroe shared details of her relationships, 
including her affairs with President John F. Kennedy and his brother, Robert F. Kennedy. Monroe trusted Sinatra and confided in him about her personal struggles and emotional turmoil. Sinatra witnessed Monroe's vulnerability firsthand. He observed her battle with substance abuse and depression, which worsened as she grappled with the demands of her career and relationships. Sinatra tried to intervene and support Monroe during her difficult moments. Despite their friendship, Sinatra was unable to prevent Monroe's tragic demise. He was devastated by her death and deeply mourned the loss of his dear friend. Sinatra's grief was compounded by his belief that Monroe's death was not a simple overdose, but a result of sinister forces at play. In the aftermath of Monroe's passing, Sinatra continued to honor her memory. He expressed regret over not being able to do more to help her overcome her struggles. Monroe's Last Days at Calneva Lodge In the final days before her death, Marilyn Monroe stayed at the Cal Neva Lodge, a resort owned by Frank Sinatra, located by Lake Tahoe. This was in the company of her ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio. The two had quietly reconciled and were considering remarriage. Marilyn was emotionally unstable during this time, feeling a mix of happiness at reuniting with DiMaggio and despair over her relationships, especially with the Kennedys. Witnesses reported that Monroe was frequently seen in distress, fluctuating between joy and sadness. She confided in Sinatra about feeling abandoned by the Kennedys and struggled with anxiety. Throughout her stay, Monroe consumed cocktails and pills excessively. On one occasion, she accidentally overdosed on barbiturates, causing Sinatra to rush to her aid. He found her unconscious and revived her with cold water, then took her on a brisk walk around the resort to keep her alert. Sinatra later described Monroe as extremely emotionally unraveled during this weekend. Witnesses saw him guiding a drowsy Monroe around the Calneva cabins to prevent another overdose. Despite the efforts to support her, Monroe's emotional state continued to deteriorate. During this time, tabloid reporters were lurking around the resort, trying to capture photos of Monroe. They had learned about her secret reunion with DiMaggio and planned press conference. The media attention added to Monroe's distress and contributed to her substance abuse. DiMaggio, who stayed nearby in a separate hotel, worked with Sinatra to stabilize Monroe and keep her safe. However, her emotional struggles persisted, enhanced by her struggles with fame, relationships, and substance abuse. Frank Sinatra on Monroe's death. Frank Sinatra was deeply affected by her tragic death in 1962. Sinatra believed that Monroe's relationships with President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert F. Kennedy played a significant role in her demise. He suspected that Monroe possessed sensitive information about the Kennedys' affairs, which posed a threat to their reputations and political careers. Following Monroe's death, Sinatra became determined to expose what he perceived as a cover-up. He utilized his influence and connections within the entertainment industry to gather information and investigate the circumstances surrounding Monroe's final days. One key aspect of Sinatra's investigation was his belief that Monroe's death was not a simple overdose, but a deliberate act orchestrated by individuals seeking to protect their interests. He suspected that Monroe's intimate involvement with the Kennedys and her knowledge of sensitive political matters made her a target. Sinatra's road manager and close friend, Tony Opisano, reportedly provided shocking new evidence about Monroe's death. According to Opisano, Sinatra uncovered information suggesting that Monroe's demise was not accidental, but part of a larger conspiracy involving powerful figures. Sinatra's involvement in uncovering the truth about Monroe's death extended beyond his personal connections. He allegedly financed private investigations and sought information from various sources, to piece together the events leading up to Monroe's passing. Sinatra's perspective on Monroe's death was influenced by his personal relationship with the actress. Despite rumors of a romantic involvement, Sinatra maintained that they were close friends. He deeply cared for Monroe and was determined to seek justice on her behalf. Throughout his investigation, Sinatra encountered challenges and obstacles, including the disappearance of key evidence and conflicting accounts from witnesses. Despite these challenges, he remained committed to exposing the truth and ensuring that Monroe's legacy was not tarnished by misinformation. 
Sinatra's efforts to uncover the real reason behind Monroe's death reflected his dedication to seeking justice and preserving the memory of his dear friend. Legacy and Unanswered Questions Monroe's legacy as a cultural icon endures through her films, photographs, and enduring influence on popular culture. Despite her short life, she left an indelible mark on Hollywood and beyond. One of the questions surrounding Monroe's death is the exact circumstances that led to her passing. Officially ruled as an overdose, speculation persists regarding the possibility of foul play. Many believe that Monroe's connections with powerful figures, including the Kennedys and organized crime, may have played a role in her demise. Over the years, numerous conspiracy theories have emerged, pointing to potential involvement of political figures, mafia connections, and Hollywood elites in Monroe's death. Some theories suggest that Monroe's knowledge of President John F. Kennedy's affairs and her rumored relationship with his brother Robert F. Kennedy made her a target for those seeking to protect their reputations and political ambitions. Monroe's legacy extends beyond her tragic death. She continues to be celebrated for her talent, beauty, and charisma. Monroe's films, including classics like Some Like It Hot and The Seven Year Itch, remain popular and continue to introduce new generations to her timeless appeal. In addition to her film legacy, Monroe's personal life and struggles have also contributed to her enduring fascination. Her relationships with high-profile figures, battles with substance abuse, and emotional vulnerability have humanized her in the eyes of many fans. The unanswered questions surrounding Monroe's death highlight broader issues related to fame, power, and the complexities of celebrity life. The enduring interest in her story reflects a broader cultural fascination with the private lives and struggles of public figures. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.